right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1990 Toyota Serra. Up front is a 1.5 liter inline four and down below is a four speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here Serra for many reasons. It's strange, it's JDM, and it's just one of the coolest cars I've seen in a while. And I'm excited to share that with you guys today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack I have available for just $10. You can also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form. And you could read my behind the scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 1.5 liter under the hood, making about 108 horsepower. <laughs> Well, it's not a horsepower monster. It's not anything too crazy. And most of it is shared with the Toyota Paseo. We're gonna be talking about that a lot because that was a vehicle that we got here in the US while we didn't get the Serra here. So it does share a lot of characteristics, but it also does not share like a mass airflow sensor and some other bits and pieces like that. So you really get to test your luck when it comes to maintenance. Like I said, paired to a four-speed automatic transmission. However, a five-speed manual was also offered as well, if that's something you would have liked. And last but not least, the Sarah is front-wheel drive. One thing I do want to note mechanically, actually, before we get onto the interior, is that some parts do cross over from the Paseo here in the States. The suspension carries over and the brakes carry over. And like I mentioned, parts of the engine, but not everything. So let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have very plain, very boring, very Toyota gauges. On the left is my fuel, then I have my speedometer, and on the right, I have my tachometer and coolant temperature, as well as I get a nice little digital clock, but they're yellow, they're basic, they do the job in a very, very Toyota way. Speaking of which, the steering wheel doesn't have any pizzazz or flair either, with just the little Toyota logo in the center, and that's it. The spokes of the steering wheel are also way down low, not very driver oriented, more of a cruiser or Corolla or something like that. Off to the right of me, I do have my power mirror switches and a little cubby slash ashtray. And on the door, I have my window locks as well as my power windows. However, as you'll notice looking at the Sarah, that's the only bit that opens. That's it, like a DeLorean or Countach. And we'll talk about why that is a little bit later on. Moving into the center, I have a rear defroster and hazard switch, as well as a climate control vent. All are sort of slanted towards the driver. Kind of unique there. But then we have the climate controls. A couple of things to note here. First of all, I have automatic climate controls, which is fantastic for 1990. But also, it was standard on the Toyota Serra to have air conditioning. The reason for that is the bubble design. As you can see, there's window up above me, next to me, in front of me, and behind me. And so that creates a greenhouse effect, which means that you get pretty boiled in here. Now, they did offer these shades that would pop in as well, but I wanted to experience the glass up above me today. But that meant that every single Sarah got air conditioning no matter of trim or phase. Then I do have an aftermarket radio because every radio from the 1990s was pretty garbage and also Japanese domestic vehicles don't get American frequencies. So you gotta change that out if you're gonna live with one in America. Then I have a cigarette lighter and ashtray and then I have the shifter. The shifter is pretty much out of every other Toyota, nothing really too crazy or interesting. However, the owner Ian has put a Japanese domestic market backup warning in this particular Sarah, so I'll give you a listen. Then I have the handbrake and center console, and that finishes out the interior, meaning the Sarah, of course, does not pass the big friggin' bottle test. One of my favorite pieces of the interior is the floor mats. They are the original floor mats, which is fantastic. You had three choices, either black, brown, or this awesome, fun retro pattern that I absolutely love, and I'm so glad that this Sarah has them. The seats are decently comfortable. They're a little bit small, but I also recognize that I am larger than most, if not any Sarah owner ever. So that's to be expected. However, 
in the back, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so I guess I'm kind of in the back of the Sarah. I don't fit back here. No one really from America is gonna be able to fit back here, which is a little bit of a shame, but it's still cool that it has back seats. I guess you could jam someone back here if you really wanted to, but I also can't reach the door to close it. So here I am back here suffering. Um, what can you do, you know? Let's go take a quick look at the cargo space or really lack thereof. And then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so we're on the back of the Toyota Sarah from 1990. Pop the key in here and lift. Although I do want to mention the key. This is a Royal Clover key, which was actually kind of a collector's item in Japan, which is kind of cool. Something interesting is that this is actually a cargo cover. These are factory speakers. However, they come up with the cargo cover. But once you're down here, that's it. That's your whole trunk. Compare this to a Miata. Um, I think that's the only thing really comparable in size is a Miata trunk. It's not very spacious. And this is actually refinished in suede. Normally it would be sort of this like leathery material, but the owner Ian actually redid it in suede. I think it looks great, but that's it. That, that's all the stuff. Now we gotta talk about the looks and let's get the normal looks out of the way. I think it looks fantastic. I think it looks futuristic. I love the curved bubble dome. Kind of reminds me of the old Speed Racer Mach 5. He had that like underwater dome that would go over the Mach 5. Same sort of idea here, at least in my book, which I think is just phenomenal. Something interesting about the headlights is that the Sarah was actually one of the first cars to have projector headlights all the way back in 1990. Kind of interesting. But then let's talk about the biggest design trait the one that everyone looks for, the butterfly doors. Look at them in all of their glory. That's right, this car has butterfly doors like that of a McLaren F1, which interestingly enough, the designer of the McLaren F1, Gordon Murray, is actually quoted as saying he saw a Toyota Serra this car in his neighbor's driveway with the doors up and said, hmm, I'm gonna put those doors on my car and thus one of the most famous cars ever produced, the McLaren F1 copied this. <laughs> Take that McLaren. So a little bit of fun fact trivia for you. But now let's get to my final thoughts on the 1990 Toyota Sarah, which I kept accidentally calling Michael Sarah when I was doing research, but whatever. Is this car fast? No. Does it handle like no other? Also no. It is very Toyota. It's very business in here. I recently drove a Toyota Celica all-track turbo and I said that that car was sort of lacking pizzazz. When I drove it, I don't know, it was kind of like mumbling its way through the back roads I was taking it on. And so this drives in a quite similar manner. It's not crazy quick. It doesn't handle really well. It does things adequately, sure, without a doubt, but there's no pizzazz in the driving experience. But in this instance, that's okay because when you park this thing and those doors go up, everything else stops. Nothing else matters at that point. Driving in here, actually looking up and seeing this bubble, no line, look, at, look over my shoulder. There's no pillar up above my right shoulder like there would be in a car. There's no frame. It's just curved glass all the way. I mean, how many vehicles have you driven that do that? Not many. And that's where the Sarah becomes special. And this car is incredibly special. Does it drive any different than any other Toyota? No, but the doors go up, you get curved glass up above you. No one knows what it is. Everyone will stop you at the gas station and say, hey, what is that? What is that? Is that a little DeLorean? Is that a shrunken McLaren? And you get to say, no, it's my Toyota. And that is so cool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Ian for letting me review his Sarah. I've been wanting to drive one of these for so long. As soon as I learned what they were, they were immediately put onto my bucket list and I'm so glad that today I get to finally check that off. That's all, thank you to him. His Instagram is found in the description below. Asian McLaren, which I absolutely love. You can go check it out, see all of the sweet photos and videos and more information on this particular Sarah. It's just, it's really, really cool. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.